Hey, what's up, ecosystem? How do you manage your dealer inventory data? Now, carriers and brokers, stay with me. Car dealers buy and sell online now more than ever before. That means inventory is turning over, trade-ins being appraised, reconditioned, and auction cars are selling high on wholesale. And a lot of that is happening digitally. That's why we all need a smarter dashboard where data tells a story of our path to profitability. So please join me and Ty Thompson with a warm welcome to Tim Scoutalis, Director of Strategic Accounts at Max Digital, to answer the question, what's the deal? Join us in the live chat. Ask your questions, grow your business. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host, and I want to welcome you back to another Tuesday Nights Live. It is Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host, and I really appreciate you joining me tonight. Let me tell you what's happening here. If it's your first time here, I want you to feel welcome. Please do feel welcome at Auto Transport Intel. We welcome all the verticals. This is educational, it's informational, and it might be a little bit fun, so I'm hoping it is. Please do say hello in the live chat. The live chat is a big part of the show, as you'll see. You, you can share information, ask questions, and I want you to do all of that as we go into industry news. That's at the quarter hour. Now, industry news is social media news, national news. We've got a lot of technology news. We're going to talk about um, load boards, mobile apps, in the industry news. It was almost a super highway, but not quite. But you, you help me be the judge of that. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to cover some interesting stuff. Then we're going to talk to Ty Thompson at Cars on the Move. Is going to join me. We're going to kind of recap. We do that. We have our show on Friday. So we're going to do a little bit of recap. And we're going to lead into a long one-hour interview and discussion with Tim Scoutalis, Director of Strategic Accounts at Max Digital. Now, I, I, want, I want to keep your attention. Do me a favor. This is a dealer show, and half the audience is carriers, and then we got brokers and dispatchers, but more and more we got dealers joining us, and that's why Ty is joining me, to help explain why it is so important that we focus on the dealer pain and the dealer management of the dealer cars, because that is one of the, I mean, where do you find cars? And that's actually one of the reasons why I tied load boards into this, got dealer dashboard, load boards, all that good stuff. So, like I said, say hello in the live chat. Oh, do me a favor. You're looking at the YouTube screen. You see right below this, You see, do you see that share button? And you see that like button? Go ahead and hit that for me, okay, while you're doing that. And then hit that share button. And then that, you hit see a copy button. You hit that copy button. You can grab that YouTube link. You can text it. Email it, share it on social media, let people know, listen, right now there's another great dealer show. If you're a carrier or broker and you have a lot of dealer clientele, you're going to love this show. And if you're a dealer, you're going to love this show too. Also, if you have questions, 
you know, you're looking for, we had another one come in today. Hey, help me. I want to get into car hauling. I want to know what's up. You know what? We want to help you know what's up. And it's not easy. We're not going to, we're not going to sugarcoat this thing. So go to autotransportintel.com, click on the sign up button and get the, become an ATI insider, sign up for that. So you can get help, talk to Ty, you get a free seat at the round table. We're going to talk more about that. So do me a favor, stick around. We're going to be right back, and then we're going to go into the live chat. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That is the voice of Sue at Murphy Auto Transport Services. There is a phone number in the live chat. There's an email address in the live chat. If you've got dispatching questions, and Sue is a fully licensed broker, she's my co-host on Thursdays on Dispatching Live, she wants to help you. If you are looking for a great dispatcher, you want to contact Sue, and there's the information. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go into the live chat. We said we would. It's already, I see I see a lot happening here. So um, just go ahead and ring the bell. Thank you guys so much for ringing the bell. Um, and then I backed it up. You're seeing on screen, These are the. this is the live chat now. But first in here was Ty, best car shipping business channel on planet Earth. Thank you so much, Ty. I appreciate that. JD agrees. Thank you, JD. Appreciate you, and I appreciate uh, JD made industry news tonight. So well done, JD. Good job on that. Um, he shared a post on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is amazing for networking. If you are listen, if you're if you're trying to grow your executive side of your business, LinkedIn. I'm telling you, it's it's where you get hooked up. Uh, Mark Rodeke, yes, this is show 164. So thank you so much for that. 164 on a Tuesday night. I just I gotta say thank you, thank you so much for joining me and helping me make that happen. Um, I do during the show sometimes flash back to those earlier shows, and um, it's interesting. So Andrew Serkis here, excited for another great one. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that so very much. Um, Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics is here. What's up, Carlos? Part of the core. My man, Fritz Duval is here. What's up, Fritz? Thanks so much for tuning in and saying hello. And then Andrew. Andrew rang the bell with the first super chat, man. Thank you so much. He says, anything helps. Hard work needs to be rewarded with some. You know, I really appreciate that, Andrew. Um, and I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to spend more time thinking about the core as it's building and growing. Um, it's starting to turn into a movement, which, again, you can really, it's really visible on LinkedIn. Um, trying to grow on the Facebook side too. Obviously, the YouTube. If you guys checked the homepage recently, oh man, the playlists of the shows because we're starting in January. DOT compliance is going to be every Wednesday. So Andrew, it's going to a good cause. It's going to the channel. Thank you so much for ringing the bell. Jeff at Faith and Freedom says, "What's up? How's it going, Jeff? Hope you're doing well. I know you're staying busy. I hope the family's good." Uh, Fast Eddie Transport, what's the deal? Where's the deal? So here's the deal, is that Tim Scoutalis, Director of Strategic Accounts at Max Digital, he likes to say, what's the deal? So I tried to work what's the deal into as many places as I could. So there you go, what is the deal? We're going to find out from Tim. Preston Huff, hey guys, thanks for having me. Preston, thanks for coming back and spending your Tuesday night with us. That's super cool, buddy. Um, and Fritz Duval says Duval Transport LLC here. Thank you. I do. I appreciate that. If no matter how many times you come back, whether it's on Dispatching Live, Cars on the Move, DOT Compliance, or Tuesday Nights Live, and if you listen, if you miss this live and you're watching on demand, you can go ahead and put it in the comments below. But let us know your company name, your running lane, your trailer capacity, because we want to get to know you. Or if you're a broker or an asset-like carrier, or you're a shipper, you're pulling your hair out because you just can't believe 
You just can't. You don't know who to talk to. Ty Thompson's in here ringing the bell. What's up, Ty Thompson? He loves the dealer. Twenty-four ninety-nine. Thank you so much, Ty. That's super cool. Um, then we got the information for Murphy Auto, and then Jeff at Faith and Freedom is ringing the bell. What is going on, you guys? Thank you. Tuesday night meeting of the exciting world of being a South Florida professional clunker chunker. <laughs> oh shoot! Yeah, you know we go by many names, right? And, and that's the things. I'm sitting at a desk, but I feel connected to it. And and actually, Ty helps me stay connected on Fridays with Cars on the Move. So thank you so much for being a clunker chunker. Uh, Nick Bador, hope all is well, Jay and everyone watching. Yes, and Nick, thank you, buddy. You know what? I had a question come up. I remember that Nick, he's in Canada, so I emailed Nick. Really, you guys, it's more than just watching a show. You're, you're really helping us grow our network and information. So thank you for doing that and being a part of it. It is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, Mark, thank you, Mark. Love the podcast. Links available on LinkedIn. Yep, and that's where you find them. That's it's, I, that's where I share most of my stuff now is LinkedIn. Don't forget to tell the peeps where to find them. Right, and uh, that is on, if you go to autotransportintel.com, and that's the website, and then there's a podcast button. You can click on that. It'll take you to the podcast site, and you can follow the podcast if you want to. And I appreciate that, Mark. And I started checking it out a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking it too. So thank you so much. You know, Sometimes I I'm, I just make the stuff, but then I gotta you know I gotta absorb it too and make sure it's right and you know it's like a the chef tastes the recipe but not too much, right? Okay. Um, Andrew Serica, love DOT compliance. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, that show shows a lot of potential. That's why we're just starting in January. We're gonna go every week. Um, that is gonna be amazing. It's a lot of work for Brian too. Brian, your DOT guy. Thanks for tuning in, Sue. Yes, we're doing great. We're off to an amazing start. Um, and uh, recognizing the community. Wow, awesome. Really appreciate that, guys. I already see the likes come in. We've got the super chats coming in. It really is something else. Um, it's like a, it's a live show. It's a production. It's a telethon. It's a, it's a group get-together. And it's all happening right here. We're live on Auto Transport Intel on YouTube. And I appreciate it. So do me a favor. Um, stick around for this. And then after this, we're going to go into industry news. There's a lot. So you're going to want to stick around. And um, actually, as, as Ty says, I think it's his favorite part of the show. So we're going to be right back. Have you checked out the latest updates from Dispatch Center? We have been busy perfecting workflows and adding new features. Keep an eye out for things such as upgraded messaging, advanced notifications, and self-dispatching. Our messaging center now sends emails and text messages to the admin when a message has been received. These notifications help to ensure a message is never missed. Advanced notifications are simply notifications that are sent out if one of the loads on your route has a price increase. Have you ever wished that you could dispatch a load without waiting for the broker to approve your request? This is now possible. Brokers and dealerships can enable self-dispatch on a carrier's account, allowing the carrier to complete a dispatch without manual approval from the posting company. This is a great time saver if you already have an established and trusting business relationship. Carriers, ask your favorite brokers and dealerships to mark you as self-dispatch today. Lastly, have you noticed related load suggestions when you use our search feature? These suggested loads are vehicles that fit within the route that you've searched and may be a great fit for any additional open spaces or your backhaul. Dispatch Center is constantly being updated and upgraded. Keep an eye out for emails detailing new features and tips. I'm over here. I'm playing, I'm playing the mandolin. Anybody else doing that? I start playing the mandolin when I listen to the Dispatch Center ad. By the way, um, the links for Superflow and Dispatch Center are right there in the live chat. Go to DispatchCenter.com, get signed up. It's free, and it's a load board. Get loaded. Also connected to a mobile app, Truckify mobile app. And there's an email address, and there's a phone number, and Mark is here in the live chat. So if you have any questions about Dispatch Center or Truckify or his end-to-end uh, software solutions, CRM, and uh, Trucker Pay tool, iTruckPay. Anyways, he's here to answer your questions. So let's do this. Let's go into industry news. Um, you know, I always start with the, uh, this is the video thumbnail for YouTube, and this is tonight's show, Max 
Digital Data with Tim Scoutalis, Director of Strategic Accounts at Max Digital. This is going to be a great show. And, uh, and thank you, Ryan, for the introduction to Tim. I met uh, Tim on Ryan's show, the MTC show on autoconversion.net. That was a few months back. And so he's here tonight. And one of the things we're going to talk about, I think we're going to spend a lot of time taking a look at this first look Max Digital dealer inventory software. Um, so Tim is going to tell us more about that. You know I like to talk about the ecosystem, right? And I've identified what I think are the 10 verticals, pretty much the pillars that make up the industry as a whole. And tonight's show, I, I tried to circle the pillars dealers, shippers, auction services, carriers, but it's all focused on the dealer. As Ty likes to say, love the dealer. And as Ty also likes to say, you know, Jay, you talk about the front of the store, I talk about the back of the store, why don't we explain to everybody in the ecosystem what in the heck we're trying to do. In the back you'll find the transporters, in the front you'll find the dealers. The fact is, it's all the same store. It just depends on your point of view. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. Central Dispatch says they have a new search. Did you guys get this email? Start a new search. Start it at Central Dispatch. Have you tried the new search? Also, Trade Rev, because um, we're going to be moving into, we're going to talk about some technology changes happening. It's all about technology again tonight. Trade Rev relaunches Move Metal Transport Guarantee. Trade, um, Trade Rev relaunches the Move Metal Transport Guarantee. Well, well, by the way, what in the... Hey, Mark. How are you doing, buddy? Mark is in here with another super chat. You know what? And I'll tell you, I appreciate that, Mark. I appreciate that very much. Um, because it just so happens that... Um, we do, you know, Kim, Kimberly and I try to take a little time off during the weekend... Well, I, I think like the rest of us, everybody's working like six days a week right now, right? We're all cooped up. If there's any way to enjoy the weekend at all in this madness of 2020, well, we try to. And Mark, thank you for your contribution to that. Because I tell you what, otherwise it is just work, 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 work. I've got my bull whip around here somewhere. I'll have to crack it again after this. Thank you so much, Mark. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Trade Rev relaunches Move Metal Transport Guarantee. So what in the world is this guarantee all about? And it's connected to software. And what is this? Why is there a Ready Logistics Mannheim Auction handshake deals email sent out to all the carriers? I'm not going to go through the uh, minutia, but why is this going on? What is going on in the, in the marketplace? And why are people driving like bats out of hell? I read this on Facebook. And apparently, like, the guy that took this photo, it's amazing he got this photo, he, he was really worried that somebody was going to smash and crash, and, well, it happened, and he got a photo of it. So please don't drive like a bat out of hell. Uh, you know the coronavirus is spiking, and next slide. Um, oh, and another reason why not to drive like a bat out of hell. This is what happens when you hit a bird at 70 miles an hour and the car was in sitting on the first position. Backwards, I'd say. And here's your flip of the week. You know that we love to cover flips of the week. I don't know why we have to have a flip every week. I'm sure the insurance companies are tired of flips of the week. And, and by the way, hey, look at that. No car on the last position. Well, Brian Riker's going to have something to say about that tomorrow. And you got to love the governor. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a sweet view. That's what you want to see at 3 a.m. Um, or 3 p.m. What is he doing? Does he have an MC number? Is he on Central? Did he get that on Central? What's the backhaul look like? There you go, J.D., Um, this was a poem, I guess. I don't know. I saw this on Facebook. How many times has he worked the truck on and off the ramps, loading and unloading? Ramps are set. Time to move. Cars are on demand. Short runs, long runs. Got to get them vehicles delivered. Car haulers can be on crunch time. Some pay great. Some pay good. Some pay only for fuel, and that's not good. Deadheads make for worrisome thinking. At least the house is paid off. Time to pick up. Some vehicles are just junk. Some vehicles are stinky. 
Oil fields trucks are beat up. Some cars are confusing. How do I start it? Well, got to get the jump box for this one. Out of gas. Well, dang it. The day is gone. How far can the car hauler go? Eight hours taken. Problems with vehicles is a pain in the hiney hole. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know who wrote this, but I'm looking forward to more. Yes, there are open positions at Jack Cooper. So if you are tired of writing poems about how bad it's going, hey, man. Apply now at Jack Cooper. That's why I did. Did you see that? I think it was two weeks ago. We did the Jack Cooper Careers Show. That was a great show. Thank you guys so much, Jack Cooper, for being a part of Auto Transport Intel. Go to jackcooper.com forward slash careers, drivers, DOT mechanics, and then other like yard supervisors, etc. Okay, back to technology and problems. Did you, did you hear about this article? Oh, I just shared this. I saw this today. On uh, Twitter, I believe it was. Their loads are garbage. Drivers say Uber's trucking business is making a ch tough job worse. Uber Freight app is what we're talking about. And you know, it shouldn't come as a real big shock, right? That a lot, this is why a lot of drivers are like, oh man, another app, really? I mean, that's what they say. Well, here's maybe why. Um,. Now, Uber has famously never been profitable, and the company has claimed it's revolutionizing the logistics industry. Obviously, ridership is down, car riding and car sharing, car riding. I'm not going to haul your extra freight for nothing. It seems to be the problem is, is that um, the app, okay? So some of the key selling points of Uber Freight, like predetermined rates and replacing a live salesman with an app, can make it difficult to correct mistakes and negotiate pricing. This guy says he he says Uber provided the wrong information, never never compensated his company for. I read I, I read this article and it seems like time and time again, there the load is heavier and in freight this is a big deal and bumping docks and detention time all big deals. Well, guess what? You have a problem with the app? And by the way, it seems like it's part of the app that you accept the rate before you do anything else. And then now that it's your job, well, uh, some truckers say that the real formula behind Uber's logistics revolution is the same one that has powered the app-based economy all along. Cheaper rates for shipping customers at the expense of the labor that makes it possible. Not good. And then, uh, you know... It, Let's see. And then, okay. With established brokerage firms, truckers typically deal with the actual broker or another single point of contact, right? You get somebody on the phone. But with an app-based service like Uber, truckers say that the only live humans they talk to are anonymous customer service reps who seem to be based overseas and are reading from a script. Can you imagine, right? Hey, yeah, um, hey, listen, dispatch. I'm calling, I'm at the, I'm at the repo lot. And they say that it's a no-key in-op, but that's not what it said on the dispatch sheet. And the guy pulls up a script. Dear Carrier, no-key in-ops are not part of our business. Stop. You know, something like that. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Perfect. So when unexpected problems arise... Call center workers put drivers on lengthy hold and eventually write support tickets that don't go anywhere unless the trucker follows up with the emails or more phone calls. And that's where the guy in the support department closed. You know, like, okay. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for your help. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping news. It's on Auto Transport Intel. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. It is show 164. Put it up on the big screen every Tuesday night. Celebrate car shipping community do sign up for the ati insider if you have questions all right go to autotransportintel.com click the sign up button and uh and you're going to get one free seat at cars on the move monthly roundtable the next session is monday december 7th at 7 p.m love to see you there but it's no problem we enjoy a small community nonetheless don't sign up no i'm just kidding it's up to you, man. I'll tell you what. This is my ELD punch. I'm getting a little bit punchy. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to I'm gonna grab this and then, uh, oh, pay attention to this. You might like it. Hey, it's Ty, transport guy. Hanging out in the transport parking lot always. If you want to learn to grow your business, I think you should probably go to ATI Insider. Sign up for free. Don't give anybody any money. Uh, 
and with that, you get, uh, I don't know, I think you get a 20 minute phone call, which usually turns into a little longer than that. You get to join the round table, uh, which is once a month. And at the round table, what we do is we get pretty detailed about how to build your business, how to connect with dealers, how to connect with auctions, how to build a lane. So if you're new, if you saw a YouTube video and says, I can make a million dollars in a week and I want to get into car hauling, Ty, and maybe you own a stinger, maybe you own a little rollback. Man, how do I figure this out? Should I buy this? Should I buy that? What do I need? How do I do it? You get to make relationships with other carriers. It's kind of not a one size fits all. It's here a little bit about you. Go to the ATI Insider, get signed up. I can help you. I really can. And right next to the sign up button is the podcast button. So you get signed up, get the podcast. Hey, I'm going to show this again. Do me a favor, leave a like, go ahead and share. And that's what the form looks like on the ATI Insider. And Jay, thanks very much. Back to you with the news. Okay, news part two. All right, Mannheim Logistics DHL Partnership. Now, some of these slides are from recent industry news, but I'm compiling them. This was almost a super highway, but not not quite, because it's it's more of an update. All right, so here we go. All right, so right, what's happening? What's happening in software? You guys remember a year ago, I did an extensive thing when we're going to kind of do a recap and an update. All right, so Central Dispatch, they're boasting their search tool. Ready Logistics, they have a new, I guess they have an updated one dispatch app. This is a pretty recent email. And do me a favor, confirm it. You know, confirm the rumor. And here's one of the difficulties. I asked Sue this. When you're, if you're not the driver, do you access the driver mobile app? I mean, literally, the only people on the driver mobile app is the driver. Everybody else, dispatcher, broker, family member is on the dashboard connected to the mobile app so if you are a driver and you have you updated your one dispatch app is it any different i'm actually curious i don't know help me out um super dispatch they've got a new look they've got new information uh run buggy says meet winton so they've got a new interface new information auto sled say they've got a new video BOL, video bill of lading. Uh, and then Plateau is a real-time logistics network for auto carriers, right? Have you already, just in that one minute, have you have you just then and there got your industry news for the night? Because there is, there is stuff happening. I said it was going to happen. That's why I did. Okay, so a year ago, and that's not because I said it that it happened. I'm not some kind of prognosticator, but I knew I could see the breadcrumbs. So a year ago, I did the top 12 car hauling load boards 2019. I think this was either November or December a year ago. And I also, right before that, I did the auto transport software update Q4 2019. We talked about load boards, mobile apps, dashboards, and CRMs. All right. And those are both videos you can find on YouTube. And so here in the top 12 car hauling load boards video you'll see in the description and by the way if you don't already know oh my gosh it's not right after the show like tonight you know i'm gonna get some sleep too probably but uh tomorrow i spend the day after every show i go through the description and really try to fill it out with time codes and stuff so you gotta wait a day but a day later this is the kind of YouTube video description you find on top 12 car hauling load boards. And here's the list. Do you have the list? All right, everybody get out your cell phone and screenshot the list. Or you can go find the video on YouTube. All right, and I don't know if, I don't think that print screen button works anymore. All right, everybody got it? All right, here we go. Let's take a look and see what's going on. All right, so um, we're waiting. All right, let me try this one more time. All right, there we go. Okay, here's what Central Dispatch looks like now. Different, right? Um, you've got a different layout, and you've got different updated search. You can actually you can add multiple cities. That's new. I think that's a backhaul button. That's new. All right, so Central Dispatch is working on the load board. Do they have a mobile app? Yeah, I don't think so. Here's Holly. This is Holly. Now, Holly is a total overhaul from United. It was remember remember UR Auto Loads? Who remembers URAutoloads.com? Man, that thing was clunky, right? Which I think I said in 
in one of those videos. It might have been top five car hauling load boards. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Paul Meyer is here. M Fields, hey, it's Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. What's up, Marcus? That's right, I remember. A little bit of John Wayne. So, uh, Holly, yeah, Holly is totally updated. What else we got here? Ooh, ship.cars. Now, I had ship.cars at number three, and I got to tell you, here, this is something I saw today. Have you seen this? Now, again, I understand. I understand there may be a ship.cars thing. But look at this, man. They've got times on their loads. And you know what I saw? I was sitting there staring at the load board. Loads were coming and going. I don't know if they were getting booked and added, but it was very interesting. This is a very interesting load board. Very interesting. Uh, now, one dispatch I think looks the same. Um, and I think they did raise the chicken nuggets. Huh? <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Um, and then a super load board, um, which is very interesting because if you do this, uh, anybody else do that? Anyways, but yeah, super load board, that's definitely been seeing some updates. Now, Metro loads hasn't really changed, I don't think hardly at all, except, and this is something we're going to be talking about tonight, um, looks like last month, well, a month ago, a month and a half ago, they no longer accept paper BOLs, which that's not the news. I think the news is that there's a lot more happening in Vinlocity now on a Metro load, a Certus load. And like I said, that's going to it's going to be in the news. But I really, I, I highly encourage you, if you have anything to add, any feedback at all, good, bad, non-negotiable, put it in the live chat. Let us know what you think of some of this current stuff. Because, um, I mean, this is, this is what... A, a lot of people, a lot of people rely on these load boards as their business strategy. I mean, that's it. That is the whole business, is booking off load boards. Which is interesting because in that Uber article, as they call the spot market, the last resort market. You know why? Because it's a last resort. It's not. A, it shouldn't be your initial business strategy. Your initial business strategy should be to try to get customers. But... It's okay. If it's not, then this is more important than ever, right? These load boards are critical to your business. Here's ACV load board, which I think is about the same as it was a year ago. What I do like about it, though, is I can see a lot of loads on one page. Let's do this again, right? This is my beef with the new central dispatch look. I can actually see less loads per page on the new central dispatch look. Um, this is actually the search loads page, but maybe, but here's what, I like this heat map. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, super, okay, so, or no, this is ship.cars. My bad. Um, not as many loads per page, but like I said, it was, very, it was, I like some of the interactivity. Um, right, I do like, you can see a lot of loads on a, on a one dispatch page. That is something I like. Um, super load board, yep, I can see several loads on the page. And ACV, but I see. I think ACV takes it. I think ACV has the most loads per page that I can see. Which I, I, I find that, I like that. Um, cars Arrive, another one. Yeah, that's a lot of loads on a page. Now, the Cars Arrive, I don't think has changed. Man, this looks like it did five years ago when I was dispatching. But that's okay, but have you seen this? CarsReload.com. Anybody going to CarsReload.com? Now, I think this is more of a client and shipper interface, but it's interesting. Um, Dispatch Center. And we're going to hear, actually, Mark's going to be on the show. Is that next week? That is next week. Cool. We're going to hear from Mark next week. Now, here's Carvana. This is, this is interesting. Now, even though it was built by a database engineer, allegedly, uh... It is, it's got a lot of loads on it. It's Carvana. So, so here we go. All right, here's what I, I want to, I want to share this. I saw this on Facebook. So Stan says, well, I just canceled all of our outstanding orders with the Certus McNutt. 
We've dealt with them for over 20 years, but after getting off the phone with their administrative office, literally begging them to continue sending us POLs to our office so our office personnel can make the cold calls for both pickup and delivery, correct missing, incomplete, and incorrect contact names, numbers, or addresses, I got flatly refused. It's all in the app sent to the driver. That's why I was saying, see, if you work in the office, you're not, you're not in the driver's app. You're not in there. You never go in the driver's app. You go to the dashboard. That's how you manage things. Just and that's there's your connection. Dealers have a dashboard. Carriers have a dashboard. Guess what? Auctions. When you're when you're dealing with the auction and you're doing it online, you're doing it digitally, you're doing it 2020, you have a dashboard. It's done in the dashboard. But they said no, but it's it's, it's in the driver's app. So Stan says, listen, I employ a full office staff in a real brick and mortar building. Why in the world should I set the responsibility of setting up, verifying, entering detailed info for pickup and deliveries, pushed off on the driver? I pay good money to the drivers to load, fuel, drive, unload. I shouldn't have to pay them to sit on the side of the road for an hour on hold, chasing around bad info. Sorry for the rant. I'm just irritated. And then he goes on. And then it goes on. And then there's more. And so the, the point is that, and this is where Plateau comes in. All right, what we, we clearly, you know, the question is this. Do, do, we, do we have enough technology? I just threw up like, what, 10? That was 10 plus companies of technology of load boards and mobile apps. And that's not even all of them. There's more. There, we're probably at double that. I, I, in fact, if you take uh, the carriers, the asset light carriers, and then the asset heavy carriers and all of the carriers and the brokers and the and the technology companies there might be 30 companies with technology and that's what auto transport q4 2019 uh yeah that list is really long actually i think it might be like 40 companies but we'll scale it back to 30 okay anyways it's a lot of technology it's too much for the driver etc so plateau is an overarching uh software because somebody you know we got to try to tie this together there's got to be a way to put all of the stores in one big mall. Huh? All right. So, anyways, that's what Plateau is. Um, we're going to find out more about that next month on Auto Transport Intel. I do want to thank Paul Meyer, uh, DealerVendorMatch.com. That was a great show last week. Thank you, Paul. You know, Auto Transport Intel is live four times a week. This is Tuesday night. Tuesday night's live. Tomorrow is DOT Compliance. Right now, it's every other Wednesday. It's 30 minutes with your DOT guy. So if you have a legal question, like an important question, like I'm, I don't want to be a flip of the week question, you want to tune in to DOT Compliance. Now, Tuesday Night's Live is at 8 p.m. Central, but all other shows are at noon. Wednesday's at noon, Thursday's at noon, Friday's at noon, Central Time. Don't be the flip of the week. Find out how to load your trailer. That's what Brian, your DOT guy, is all about. He's got graphs, diagrams, and legal knowledge to get you set up, right? Here's a good one. Is your five-car hotshot trailer hauled with a dually legal? Brian can tell you infinitum. It's no joke, and we're going to do it again tomorrow at noon. Also, if you want to catch up on dispatching and load boards, kind of like I just did just there... You want to catch Dispatching Live? It's every Thursday at noon Central Time. Sue is my co-host from Murphy Auto Transport. Thank you so much, Sue. And if you miss the show, that's right, I podcast it. So I put it on the podcast, and then I dress it up with all the trimmings. I edit it. I put the words and the titles and the et cetera. In fact, this show, <laughs> this show, that this one last week, uh, somebody in the live chat said their wife was having a baby on Saturday and it was Thursday and they needed to get loaded in New York and she was having her baby in Tampa on Saturday. So shout out to the newborn out there. We got a little car hauler out in the audience somewhere. And then cars on the move on Fridays at noon. And Ty, he's gonna Ty's gonna be here real soon. That is me and Ty. We're connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. We're talking about growing your business, building your strategy that'll take you into the weekend. Um, Ty shared this. This was from last week. The definition of move: it's to go in a specific direction or manner, to make progress. That's good, man. Cars on the move. Love that. 
And there's there's me and Ty. Ty's out in the parking lot. Oh, and this was a good one. So, well, Friday show, be the dealer cleaner fish as you start your auto transport business. That's pretty strange. Like, you're seeing the hand is frozen, but I'm here. I'm, I'm real... Okay, so anyways, be the dealer cleaner fish. What is he talking about? Well, we, we started having this conversation a long time ago, even in 2019 at the Auto Haulers Association of America Spring Conference. Uh, this is where, you know, you've got the, the, the large carriers of the big whales. And so if you're a new startup, you got a small trailer, it's just you, you're an owner operator, yes, use the load boards to fill in the gaps, but be the cleaner fish to the big whale. They've got onesies and twosies. They can't move on a nine car or a stinger. So contact those companies. Don't be afraid. And next week, I think this is one of my last slides. Next week is going to be a great show. Auction and transport consolidation with one auction view. That's Sky Hallman and one auction view. And Mark Grodeke of Superflow Systems. We're going to show how they are collaborating on a feature on one auction view with uh, Mark's Transport Auto Quoter, which is out of this world. This is the Car Shaming Business Channel. This is where we share information, education, information, entertainment, and mansplaining all in one place. So listen, um, I want you to, here, do me a favor. I want you to stick, by the way, what did I miss in the live chat? Uh, let's just check in. Let's just check in real quick. Wow, the likes are doing great. Wow, thank you guys so much. That is so awesome. Um, Gary P., Vinlocity is kicking ass. Use it every day. All right. See, that's the thing. This is what's in, you want. You want to know? I'm so glad. Thank you, Gary. And we're going to go back into the live chat in a second, too. But I want to point this out, is that everything is a work in progress. And when we get good feedback, when we get good user feedback, it may be hard to take at the time, but we have time to correct and change course and make it better. Because I know every single company that has technology in auto transport wants to help make it better. I don't think anybody said, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna make like the worst stuff and just make everything horrible. No, I don't, I don't believe that. So that's what, it's important. And we need, sometimes we need good user feedback. Sometimes we need bad user feedback. So, um, let us see. Oh, and Mike Phillips is here. Thanks for tuning in, Mike. All the trimmings. What's up, guys? What's up, Mike Phillips? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for saying hello. All right. Jay, we've heard enough out of you. I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. Stick around. Right after this, we're going to be we're going to bring Ty in. We're going to start talking about Tim Scoutalus at Max Digital and start laying the foundation of what's next to come. So, grab your ELD punch because I'm gonna be right back. Even with all the tools at our disposal, there is still about 48 million empty miles in our network. Empty miles happen when driver Bob makes his delivery and returns home without freight. After all, there aren't cars just waiting for delivery on every corner, but there is non-automotive freight and our network is already active around the country. So what if Bob could leverage his trailer to deliver something other than cars? We searched high and low to find a way to do this within regulations, and we found it. We can do this now with current equipment, and we're working on innovative new trailers that will deliver even more cars and more freight. This is a total game changer, and here's the math. We're already paying the cost of those 48 million empty miles, and with no revenue to show for it. We can make $1.50 to $2.50 in revenue per mile with dry freight. Since dry freight is not as specialized as automotive, backhauls can be found without adding miles to Bob's trip. This means Jack Cooper will make even more profit, and our drivers will make even more money. It also means fewer miles in America's delivery network and lower carbon emissions for the country. Call it a win-win-win-win for driver Bob, for Jack Cooper, for America, and for our investors. We're Jack Cooper, driving innovation for the 21st century. That is Jack Cooper, and Jack Cooper is hiring. Go to jackcooper.com uh, forward slash careers. You'll see that in the live chat. You can go to uh, you can go to the website. You can email recruiting at jackcooper.com. Uh, let's see. You can also, there's a phone number. Call that phone number and follow the HR prompts. 
and you also can talk to the folks at Jack Cooper and find out how you can become a part of their organization. Now, I just heard the doorbell, and my, by the way, my ch- I've done this whole show. I've gone 44 minutes, and I never asked how the audio is. Now, let's just do, let's check it out. I think we're okay, but I think it just dropped on me. Hang on one second. Let me go into the live chat while I fix my audio. And I want to, because I want to have everything all buttoned up before Ty gets here. Um, You know, he doesn't like it when he sees slackers. Um, And he starts taking names, and he starts taking notes, and he starts, you know, telling people that they're a knucklehead. Hey, what's up, knucklehead? Knucklehead's in the live chat. What's going on? All right, so let's go check in with Ty. Ty, what's up? Hey, Jay, how are you? Hey, man, I'm good. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Been a good day. Good week. Uh, it, it's been a good week. It's it's The weather's been nice. That always makes it a little better. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was great uh, info highway you did there. So, yeah, that was, uh, it was a pseudo highway. I was, I was really on the fence. I'm like, so here, here's what I was thinking. Okay, so a, 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 an information super highway could be a standalone video. And that, that could almost be a standalone video. Yeah. I was torn. I didn't know what to do, so I just put it in the news. I think you did good. I, yeah. I think it's going to be a nice blend with uh, Tim. Tonight. Well, that's what's interesting is that because there are so many car hauling businesses. And by the way, do me a, fighter, a favor. Okay, so um, uh, so Kimberly says my audio is good. JD says my audio is good. How's Ty's audio? Ty, give us a mic check, one, two, three. Uh, audio check, check. Okay. Um, how am I feeling? I, I, okay, I think you're good. I, and please let me please let us know in the live chat if you think Ty's audio mm-hmm. is good. Oh, Paul loves the show. Dude, Paul Meyer just said he loves the show. Thank you, Paul. Cool. That's super oh, cool. Oh, sorry. I got your message. I promise I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right here, li- busted live on Auto Transport Intel. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I have talked to a lot of guys about Paul, and I'm definitely getting ready to send you some, so. I'll definitely call you tomorrow, Paul. No well, problem. and we and I we talked about him a lot leading up to the show. And actually, I saw I saw another clip with Paul. Paul, you do a good job too, buddy. I really I you know what's interesting? You know when you're seeing something that's good because you start thinking, man, I need to I need to tuck in my shirt and up my game. I mean, this is ridiculous, right? So good job, Paul. You made me feel that way. Um, and you have a great show too. <laughs> Knucklehead says you're good, Ty. Hellcat Easy says you're good, Ty. Gary P says you're good. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate that. Well, here's the. Uh, I get excited when you let me come on the Tuesday night show. I like the Friday show. Thursday's still my favorite, and I think it's going to be a toss-up between Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm just excited to be here. <laughs> well, uh, you know, too, it's interesting too. I don't know if it's the darkness, or the setup, or what it is, but Tuesday night has a different feel from the other shows entirely. Yeah, it's they're all different and they're all good. I know. And I, I appreciate. Thank you. You know, I, I talk to a lot of guys, and I always make sure that they understand that. You know, you've put a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of energy, and man, it's been a it's been a long road. And, and to see it coming together and to have kind of been with you from start to today is real honor. It really is, and I'm excited to be here. So I always want to tell you thank you for having me on. I appreciate. Well, I appreciate, it. and you know, several people, uh, not several, but periodically, people send me a message saying something similar and i appreciate it every time and it is it's fun for me and that's actually that's why i pulled up that aha like to think about when we were at aha if you haven't seen the video of us live at auto haulers association of america i mean we did good but man it was kind of a tough crowd it was a rough crowd. they were the big those were the big whales those were the fleets and there are still some i i'm just gonna say it i mean there's still some folks in that arena that are they're still not sure of what what's happening here at Auto Transport Intel, and I think that's why I point out the ecosystem. I I think there's room for all of us, and actually the, there's a need. There, you need the catfish at the bottom of the fish tank to clean up the stuff. Yeah, definitely, and I think it's a good good way to step into 
why am I on the show tonight? Why was Tim on the show tonight? And this goes back to what, you know, you always hear me talk about, love the car dealer. If you want to know what you're doing, go talk to the car dealer. So <clears throat> I'm going to take a couple of steps back, set it up. Why I'm so excited to have guys like Tim and Paul on, the, on your Tuesday night show, right? So as a carrier, I was, I've been a carrier for, <laughs> I've been a carrier for 20 <laughs> Did everybody see that? No, no. See, they, nobody gets to see it. I, I just gave him one of these. And when I when I do people. that, it means, go, buddy, go. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 20 years in the business, started with a three car, built the fleet of 20, don't have any trucks now, uh, got plenty of stories that are good and plenty of stories that are bad. And the one thing I'm sure of is that if you're in the car hauling business, I hope you understand there's nothing easy about it. Half the people in this live chat will raise their hand with joy and say, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So <clears throat> what we're here to do and what I, I see this taken form is, like Jay says, it's a big ecosystem. We've got all the way from OEM to buy here, pay here to, you know, I just talked to Candy over at uh, Jack Port. Uh, Jack Port, I talked to Jack's Candy. Port, uh-huh. She's telling me more stuff that's going on in her world. So. One of the, the things that I like about, the, especially Tuesday night, it's you get to see different parts of the ecosystem that still affect what you do as a carrier. You're a carrier. You've got whether it's one truck and a three-car trailer or you've got a fleet of 100. You, there's nothing easy about the business, and it all revolves around the dealer, right? It's, it's all about the dealer. So today's times because of COVID, things are changing things are getting out of control people are you know doing everything digitally and that's another reason why i look at ty and jay our relationship and i think these two guys right here that you see on the screen we don't always think alike but we're always working at the same goal the same end game and that's bringing this community together so i'm excited because i like to demonstrate i like to show that's why i hang out in the transport parking lot that's why i talk to dealers that's why i talk to wholesalers that's why i talk to auction sales reps auction managers and carriers all in the transport parking lot is to show to demonstrate there's a lot of life at an auction there's all revolves around the dealer i mean think about it you're not going to have an auction whether it's a digital online auction whether it's a physical auction you don't have an auction unless you have what a dealer if you're going to move cars and you, you don't know what I'm talking about, and I sound like I'm just talking 100 miles an hour about nothing, the thing is, is that if you're getting cars off of a load board, nine times out of 10, that's from or to a car dealer. Right, Jay? No, and you did that. You pointed that out. It's so interesting. From the very beginning, I was talking a lot about load boards, mobile apps, dispatching, and you would not stop talking about dealers. And it's funny, the, the, as big as the auction system is, I mean, hundreds of auctions nationwide, without dealers, what would auctions do? I have no idea. Yeah, well, and this goes into symbiotic mutualistic, right? That kind of language. Because honestly, what would a dealer do without an auction? Ah, See, well, so then, we're about to find we're <laughs> actually we're slowly finding out the answer to that question, which well, is so we, interesting. We are. But, I, you know, there's some news that you and I keep talking about, about these repos. And we keep talking, you know, and then we keep I'm in a transport parking lot. I just was at the auction. They really ran cars through. I talked to all the car dealers that were there and I asked them, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here because we get to run cars through. I get to see them and I get to hear them and I get to smell them and I get to touch them, whatever I want to do then I can buy the car. Dealers are showing up at the auctions that are running the cars through. I said this Friday, yeah. guys that I have never seen at an independent auction that I hang out at are not just showing up, they're sending their trade-ins in their old inventory and they're selling it in the lane and it's bringing the money. So I'm talking to guys that are bringing 10, 20, 30, talk to our, our friends there, first class, they ran 100 cars through. I mean, right. these guys, are, they're ramping it up. So the volume coming into the auction that it has the doors open, that's running the cars, I'm seeing live, that's just going crazy. So the next thing that Jay and I always talk about are repos. There's this big repo, our buddy Paul. <laughs> over Paul at Black, Black Book, Book yeah. You wow. know, 1.92 million repos showing he up He talks quick. repo constantly for a yeah. reason. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Big reason. So again, I don't want to hold up Tim coming on, but I do. I do want to emphasize what we're. I, I. I just. This was funny. I called Tim today. I talked to him for maybe five minutes. I said, Tim, we can't talk anymore. This is going. We got to save it for the show. That's what, I'm always doing that. As soon. <laughs> I, I. I feel so bad. I like. I. I spark up a fire and then I'm like. Then I blow it out. Okay, we can't do anything. <laughs> Well, and it's funny because if you haven't been a part of this, you know, you're like, what do you mean? Why are you what hanging out? talking about, right? Why wouldn't you talk? We're just going to have, well, because it's better when it's live. Yeah, so it's better. Even the short conversation that I have with Tim, you're going to see, okay, you'll, you'll see this dialogue, this interaction between Tim and I and Jay, and you'll start to see, wow, they know that guy, they know that guy, they know this guy. Oh, man. All these connections. And this so is I'm, what I talk about. Yes. You're networking. OK, you want to be a car hauler. You want to own your own business. Jay said it just a second ago. I'll say it again. Load boards are OK if that's what you want to do. But if you really want to own your business, if you really want to build a business, maybe even build a fleet, there's a better way. And the better way is let's talk to car dealers. And if you get enough of those handshake deal emails, you're going to come <laughs> running for the ATI insider. Absolutely. Because, I mean, that is like, what are you talking about? Um, well, on the networking, used car week. And so AAAS, I can't remember, automotive analytics. Dang it. Um, uh, thank you, Anthony Montero. Um, he allowed me access to the AAAS. I was there like all day this morning, beefing up on digital dealer marketing. Dude, Vin TV. I can't wait to talk more about Vin TV, but it won't be tonight. I don't think there's time for that. Um, and then Use Car Week. I was in Use Car Week yesterday. That started. And, you know, again, like, what are we talking about right now? I, we talk about Use Car Week. And, you know, there's people right now like, yeah, yeah, Jay, skip, skip. The networking that goes on when we talk about auctions and dealers and repo companies, if you want to build your business, this is. This networking at trade, and I know it's a, only a virtual event, so I'm telling Kimberly today. I said, you know, networking at the virtual event is different, obviously, than networking at the live event. In some, here's an advantage, though. Remember in Raleigh, there were some people we would see. We're trying to trying to read their badge. Like, do I want to talk to that guy, or do I want to get roped into another 20 minute fintech conversation? Uh, so, so you're trying to read their badges in about half a second without looking like it. There must be a, a meme for, you know, not looking like you're reading a badge. But, uh, anyways, so there's that. And then there's the intimidation factor of, nah, I just, I can't talk to that guy. Like, there's no way. Like, you know, his shoes cost more than my house. So, right, so you've got that. Where So on the virtual side, I just, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going through all these names and companies and I'm just firing off LinkedIn messages like, "Hey, but but you gotta you gotta throw you gotta put the right bait on the hook because you only get one shot on that LinkedIn message," and then they just ignore you. Like, yeah, you know what? That was one heck of a networking attempt. But nah, I'm good. I'm gonna skip this one. Right. Well, and what you're talking about, <laughs> it's really good because there's. You know, Jay's networking to bring these big names on, like Tim, like oh, Paul. It's all like networking. Paul. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and to bring this information to you, I, what I'm showing you and what Jay's showing you is the same thing that applies to you and your business. And this is what I always tell guys start in your backyard. Go talk to the local car dealer, the little used car lot guy that has 10, 15 cars on his lot. Go talk to him. Just pull up him. to the curb, get out of the truck, and just go talk to him. Yeah. What do you, yeah, and expect. use the words you hear on the show. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. Get your notepad. Yeah. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dashboard. Inventory. Well, right? no, I was thinking today about, you know, I really wish I was had a little more time I to know. be on this used car week and this AAAS. I know, yeah. To be on these things. And I, I started reflecting back to running a fleet of 20 trucks. And I thought, man, I, I never had time to go to a conference. No. I never had time to do anything. And stuff. nobody does. That's And that's one of the reasons why... I feel like I'm performing a service. I sit here. I've got. I'll have two. I've had two webinars going on at the same time, among two computers, and I'm sitting here because I know. Yeah, you can't do that. No, you Fast Eddie Transport does not have time for two webinars while he's making cars move. No, and and that, and that's what's beautiful about this ATI, 
and that, and that's again that's what um, my point is here is is to say it's it we, we don't expect you to be at a conference we don't expect you to know all this stuff what we do encourage you to do is to build relationships with car dealers and auctions that that's a, you know because i mean jay's sitting here he's in the middle of these used car week he's getting information that i don't have oh my and, gosh and yeah the download on information Whoa. is probably crazy but the reality of it is is jay doesn't know and i don't know and probably every guest that's on this show probably really doesn't know exactly what's going to happen next so that's why you'll always hear me go back to go find a car dealer and go ask him some questions what are you doing with your trade-ins what do you, where do you get your buys? Well, I used to go to the same auction every week, but now I don't go to the same auction. Okay, well, what do you do now? Well, <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> well, and I want to, I want to say this. I can, I, I can independently verify, even though I'm biased, Tuesday night on Auto Transport Intel is unparalleled car shipping business information. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've gone, I'm everywhere. I'm looking to see if anybody is do. nobody is doing this. No, they're not. And, and that's, you know, another thing that I really like about and appreciate. Right, I got my horn around. I need to toot my own horn. I got it around here somewhere. Here we go. There you go. Okay. Good job. But anyway, that's what, that's what I like is that, uh, we're, Jay's bringing you this incredible information, bringing these great guests with all this information. And if you're really paying attention, because I can, I can see how you might get bored with this. Or you might get bored yeah, with that. Sure. But the reality of it is, is listen to really what we're saying. We're really saying, if you want to build a car hauling business and you really want to make it something, first, it's not easy. <laughs> Never. Second, you're going to get all the information you need to know from talking to a car dealer. Right? Well, I can't talk to car dealers. Okay. We got our buddy, Paul. Vendor, dealer vendor match .com, you know? right. Sign up for that as a starter. And, you know, one of the things that we got out of Paul last week, which I've, I've used probably six times this week, needs analysis. Let's sit down. Let's do a needs analysis. Hey, dealer, look, I know you're busy. Here's a real simple elevator yeah. pitch, right? We heard the elevator pitch. Yeah. My name's Ty. I'm the transport guy. I transport cars from right here to right here, and I'm your man. Now, what is your lane? What is your problem? What is your pain? What's your game, dealer? Is there a need for me in your business, your organization? Can I serve you? There's my elevator pitch, right? So by talking to the car dealer, by asking him questions, what do you do with your trade-ins? Where do you get your buys? How are you getting them home? And what are all the problems in the middle? And he'll and, tell you. And here's the good news. More and more because of digital auctions, because of the way online car buying is happening, more of the market is onesies and twosies. And who's better suited to haul a onesie and twosie? The stinger or the wedge? The wedge. It's the wedge, man. And the, the stinger doesn't want that business. No. And he's pro the stinger is probably a company driver. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. All right, listen, we could go on and on. And we do every Friday at noon on Cars on the Move. Plus, here's another difference. You can't move around. You're stuck in a chair. No, boy. It's, yeah, that's what I was telling. It's got to be tough. <laughs> I was today. I was on the phone putting together a uh, trying to put together a different Friday show at a different location. And anyway, through the course of the conversation, he was worried about coming into the office and COVID. It's like, look, dude. First of all, I don't sit still, and second, I can't stand to be inside. So we're fine. Let's just go out in the transport parking lot. We'll be good. Okay, we'll put it together. So, yeah, it is. It's a little harder to sit still. You're and right. it's funny, me, whenever I take a phone call, when, when you and I talk, if we're not live, I am walking all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got to. <laughs> all right, here's what we're going to do. Remember that video? And by the way, you can see these videos. Here's a video, and there's many other videos. When you go to YouTube, go to the Max Digital YouTube channel, and Tim, they got a ton of content. Um, and it's, unfortunately, Patrick can't join us tonight. It's just going to be Tim. But Tim, man, he's got so much information. So here's a look at Tim. Here is a short video of Tim. And I'm going to send him an invite right now. Tim, get ready. My name's Tim Scott. I've completed over 16,000 appraisals in my career. I work with top-notch dealers across the country to maximize their appraisal process. Let me show you what they're doing to take the customer experience of a trade-in 
and make it oh so friendly and oh so profitable. Can't wait to see you. Okay, cool. So that is Tim. Tim will be joining us shortly. I just went popped right back into the live chat. I know it's a really quick video. Um, I mean, literally, he gets out of his car and gets halfway across the parking lot. Um, but, you know, he knows how to make a point quickly, and <laughs> which I could probably learn. Uh, let's see here. Joseph McCleary is in the live chat. He says, what did I miss? Ah, nothing. You're fine. We just got started. Actually, no, Joe, you're going to want to go back and watch the uh, Definitely Catch Industry News, the second half. A lot of information about load boards and mobile apps. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please help me make a warm welcome for Tim. Oh, I got the words on the screen, Jay. Tim Scatalis, Director of Strategic Accounts for Max Digital is here. Tim, can you see us and hear us okay? I can hear you fine. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Please do me, do me a favor. Yeah, say hello to the Auto Transport Intel audience, and then we're going to... I have found a corner of the internet I never knew existed, and I am so glad I found it. Wow. You guys are freaking awesome. You know that? Thank I mean, you, man. What a great show. What great content. Um, I'm reading the I'm you know reading the chat here on the side. Uh, you and Ty, Jay make a great team. So thank you so much wow. for having me. Looking forward thank to some you. good good conversation. You know I, that means a lot. Yeah. That was that was heartfelt. Thank you so much, Tim. Totally. And, you know I can see you in your content. I love the way and it's unfortunate Patrick can't join us. You and Patrick have that. You guys have that kind of magic going. I yes. love it. We've been. We've been doing this a long time together. He and I go way back um, to our CarMax days. And um, it's just we, when, when, the, when the virus hit and we were on lockdown, I said, hey, Patrick, we've got to get in front of our guys because we are – I travel. I'm on the road a lot. <laughs> and I said, we're going to do this show. What's the deal? We, we, could, you, we could talk about what's the deal. Um, you know, if we had to do it every day or every other day, we're going to put content out there. And this way we'll put it in the can. Um, as training videos later on down the road, because 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 look at you guys, everybody you know needs something to hold on to it. So um, sorry he can't make it; he's a little sick, but yeah, it'll be well, all right. well, we hope it gets well soon. Well, that's the thing about it is interesting when you make content because there's several things happening. Just like you said, there's there's training material which is now it's archived and can be refer referenced. You can update it, you can make it better, you can learn from it, and in the meantime. Uh, folks can run into that content, learn from it, and that's your old content. Right. My most popular videos are the ones I made when I first started three years ago. <laughs> I just I was watching one from three years ago. <laughs> right. I want. Can I wear a hat? I would love to wear a hat. You used to I'm wear a hat. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, you can wear a hat. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. I I stopped <laughs> wearing the hat. Here's the thing. I I literally wear hats that way all the time. Have my whole life. Ever since, gosh, high school, college, all the time wearing a hat like that. And I don't know, I just kind of stopped. And I thought, that's another thing about life is sometimes we just grow into a, a different habit or chapter. And I stopped wearing my hat. And then I was only wearing it for the show. And I'm like, well, you know, if I'm not wearing it when I'm not on camera, then what am I doing? Yeah. Well, listen, we, it, we evolve. We grow. There it is. <laughs> great show so thanks for thanks, having man. me really appreciate it thank you so much and by the way i want to say this thank you ryan ryan just uh added a super chat into the live chat um ryan is auto converse when you visit autotransportintel.com you'll notice that autotransportintel.com is on the auto converse platform and um uh, and there's content with me and ryan in fact we had a lively discussion um well, I, I, I dare I say the word politics. Okay, I just said it, and we're moving on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, right? And I never do that. It's a family show. <laughs> Especially now. Who would have thought it would be so toxic? But I, I think the toxicity, I think, are we back? Are we, are we over? The, no, we're not? Ah, dang it. Okay. Keep going. I want to know more about Max Digital. Yeah, Digi that's what I want to know, too. What's Max Digital? So, oh, so what is Max Digital? Okay, <laughs> so Max Digital, you know, um, we were the uh, we were the original IMS, Inventory Management System. 
Uh, back in 2001, we, some people know us as First Look. Um, we are a competitor of, a, of, of V Auto. Um, and we ran that space uh, from 2001 till about 2010. Uh, and we pivoted. We, turned, uh, we, we started a company called Max, uh, where we got into uh, create, taking the data from the inventory management side uh, and developed tools that dealers could use um, to merchandise their vehicles online, right? Online became that much more important. And we evolved even further down the road um, into sales enablement tools for folks at the dealership um, and beyond. So I, I say we're a data company because, listen, you know, the, the, the most important guy at the dealership, and even for you guys, is the used car manager. I mean, when it comes to the pre-owned inventory, he knows everything. I mean, he knows how much the, you know, who he was bidding against, right? When he was at the auction, when he bought the car. And, <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't forget either. No, he doesn't. You know, and, and, and he knows when it's going to be there and all the packages. So we take that information and we package it up um, and uh, we help this dealers display it online. And, and I'd be happy to show you some of the tools that we do. But really, uh, we're, I say we're a data company because that's what we do. Well, you know. You help dealerships sell cars too, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's what you mean when you say Max, Max Digital. You're helping sell them online. You're, are, you, are you doing any sales training in, in the store? Yeah, so we, we tell, our, our, my motto is, listen, I'm going to help you make more gross on every single car. And how you make gross on every car, it, it varies, right? Sometimes it's that acquisition when it comes to purchasing the car or trading for the vehicle. Sometimes it, it goes to when you price the vehicle. And other times it's, and in today's world, it's mostly about how do you merchandise that vehicle online? Or how do you separate um, this vehicle from the others that are just like it? Because I, I use the, the um, analogy, you know, my mom is looking at this car. How does she know that this Toyota Camry is different from that Toyota Camry, right? Sometimes the Camry's Tough to tell the difference, but maybe the Grand Cherokee or the Dodge Ram, whatever. We help dealers do that for customers to make more gross and turn the cars faster. Okay, so I want to backtrack because most of our audience is car hauler guys. So we don't always know everything there is to know about a dealership. And so the thing is, is Max Digital is a, is a company. It's a rather large company. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a privately owned uh, Chicago-based software company. We've got about 120 folks in Chicago and Austin, Texas. Okay, so I'll call that big. Okay. For our, our world, that's big. 120 okay. employees, and, and you're traveling all over the place, and you're doing a lot of things. So meaning, okay, we, we talked briefly on the phone today. I cut you off. I was like, dude, I can't. We, <laughs> we started doing the name drop game, yeah. and I was like, well, stop. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. The reason I'm asking these questions is because I, I really want to illustrate one thing right here. Who you were telling me some of the people you work for companies. So, for example, who do you go to work for? Me. So, yeah. So I'm the director of strategic accounts. I work on the strategic team and we handle the um, we work with our largest customers. So that's uh, the Hendrick Automotive Group, uh, Penske Automotive Group, uh, Luther out of Minneapolis, um, Lithia, which I just read today, grew by another seven dealerships. Um, uh, Herb Chambers up in Boston. Um, Finley, All Star, um, the, the the list goes on. We uh, Fremont up in the Upper Midwest. We work with the decision makers at those dealership groups to help you know optimize gross and turn through data. Right. So those are all big names. And the reason I wanted to point that out. Okay, I've definitely heard of Hendrick. I've definitely heard of Pinsky. Did you say Pinsky? Yep. And Sonic. We do not work with Sonic. Nope. Pinsky, Hendrick. I've definitely heard those, and I've heard it Lithia. Lithia. Right? These are big, okay, guys? So the reason I'm taking the time to do the timeout to say, okay, Tim, tell us again, who it is, what do you, these guys own lots of big right. new car stores, big. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't realize exactly how big Penske is, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it can be owned by Penske, but it might say Fayetteville Automall. Correct. Right. So, yeah, that's a different comment. Uh, yeah. Well, Lith you would never know. Lithia does the same thing, right? A lot of some of their stores carry the Lithia badge, but they bought so many other stores. You know, the stores are, are geotagged. So, again, the reason I'm pointing this out is because 
these dealerships pay Max Digital significant amount of money to have this service, this mm -hmm. data, right? Yep. They, they pay for it. And, and my point in, in pointing that out to the audience is because this all revolves around the car dealer selling cars. Yeah. Right? And, and car dealerships pay people to help them manage their inventory, help them become more profitable. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, listen, th these assets that are sitting on their lot are essentially blocks of ice, right? Yeah. Um, great. And, great illustration. Perfect. Yeah. If, if, and that <laughs> ice starts to melt the minute <laughs> they sign the check. Okay. So okay. if you've ever had a dealer call you and say, where are my cars? It's because they're depreciating asset. And he needs them back in his lot so he can recon them and sell them. Right. Okay, great. See, I always talk about interest. I always forget about depreciation, but depreciation is huge, right? Mm -hmm. And and two, you know, we just, Paul, Paul Machine, Black Book, we had him on and we're talking about data and the price of cars. And so <clears throat> the, the thing that I always try to emphasize to the carrier guy, car dealers want pretty much one thing, maybe two. One, they want their car now. I bought it 30 minutes ago. Are you loading it, Ty? Are yeah. you, are you are you on your way? And then I get yeah. the phone call. I was thinking about after we hung up the phone, I was thinking, man, do you know how many times a dealer would literally call me at 11 o'clock at night asking me if I got their one car loaded? A lot. Uh, All right. I've made that call. <laughs> yeah. Hey, is the car coming? Why? Well, because it's sold, because it's going to be sold, because I wrote a check for it, because it's a block of ice in a hundred degree parking lot on asphalt, right? Yep. It doesn't really matter what I know or what I don't know. My point is, is as a carrier, there's some things you really need to understand. Car dealers want their cars and they want them now. So by building a lane and by building a relationship, this is what I always yap about, Tim, and tell me if I'm wrong, but by building a lane, if you know you can get a hold of Ty and Ty will take care of it, you like that, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So back to Max Digital. You're there at Max Digital. Before we go a little farther, you, you've got a pretty cool background. I want to hear that story real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I started, uh, I was the guy in a white shirt and a tie that no-sailed uh, rental cars for Enterprise Rent-A-Car uh, at Borden, it was, it was called Bordentown back in the day, Nade, um, is it Mannheim, New Jersey now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was back in the early 90s, 1994. I left there to go work for a small startup at the time uh, in 1997 called CarMax. Um, at the time, we had 16 stores. You knew everybody. It was great. Um, I worked there for almost almost seven years. I left. We had over 100 stores. We opened up stores coast to coast. I was in the purchasing department. Um, I was flying to auctions. I was going to Kansas City Auto Auction every week um, on it was Wednesday, right? Yep. Uh, Tuesday, we'd do St. Louis. Wednesday, we would do um, Kansas City. And, and Kansas City. Thursday, we would do uh, whatever the other one out there in Liberty. Um, you know, hundreds of cars at KCI on Wednesday. And from there, um, I left CarMax and I started, to, I actually went to go work for the Penske Automotive Group um, in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and then my wife said, this is it. You've had enough. Um, I got into the software business. I became, um, I worked for Max Digital. I was actually a customer of theirs at, at Penske. And I've been doing this almost 10 years now. Um, I work just closely with, with three dealership groups. And um you know, this is really cool that you guys have started this community because um, used car managers have a similar community online. And um, I just think it's great that you guys have a place that, that the guys can share and vent and learn from each other. And um, kudos to you again. I mean, good job. Thanks. Well, and this is the reason I wanted to hear your background story is because this is where you and I connected. Yeah. So you were telling me about where you started a long time ago with this small company, small startup, CarMax. I said, oh, do you know Ted Walker, right? Texas <laughs> Ted Walker. <laughs> Texas so, Walker. <laughs> yeah, so Ted, um, actually, quick story about Ted. He, I know he's not watching us. If you, if you tag him, he might. But he, uh, I started in uh, Houston, Texas uh, at the CarMax at Southwest Freeway. I'm sorry, at Gulf Freeway. And uh, I really didn't know anybody. He invited me to uh, his house on Saturday night, the first Saturday night I lived there, for a crawfish boil with his family, his in-laws. 
And man, I was sold on Texas after that. So I actually really have a, a lot to thank to that guy. He's a good dude, isn't he, Ty? He's a, oh, he's a good car guy. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he told me something one time. I've been going to auctions for 20 years, and I love auctions. And I'll never stop loving auctions. He said we were standing there watching this. It was a, I don't know, there's some kind of a really high-end, nice car. And everybody's watching, you know, at the auction, when here comes a really nice one, whether, you know, Corvette, for whatever it is. And everybody's bidding the crap out of it. Wee! Things going up, and I'm standing there talking to him, and he says, "Capitalism, in its purest form." Yep. You know, you guys said this before. Um, it takes a dealer to run an auction. It actually, it actually takes three dealers. It takes a dealer to sell the car, and it takes two dealers to bid the car. It only takes <laughs> one to buy. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Listen, it's a, uh, it's an amazing place. The auction, you know. Um, it, it is true capitalism. That's a, that's a good question. I'm going to use that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it really blew me away because, you know, he's kind of a quiet guy. He's, he's, you know, he's super smart. Yeah. Or he knows everybody because everybody knows him and he's just yeah. kind of a quiet guy. And when he said that, man, I'll never forget it. And I just thought it was perfect. Yeah. And, you know, like, I don't, I'm not, it's been a while since I've been away from the CarMax buying lifestyle, but I'll tell you back in the day, and I imagine there's a lot of dealers who live like this today. When I would get done, buying my cars. And I was in, I was in charge of my own transport, um, getting yeah. my cars back to my store. But that was back in the early, you know, late nineties, early two thousands. And, you know, we had guys like you that we could, you know, you were talking about this before the relationship, you know, I, trust me, the guys wanted to haul the CarMax guys cars one, cause they were clean and they were nice. They didn't, they always started, you know, they, <laughs> you know, two, um, we probably paid our bills on time. I imagine getting paid is probably something uh, your guys online struggle with. And, um, and you know, three, it's it, having that relationship with, with the transporter. I would not only call you for the cars from the auction, but if I knew I had to get cars from one store to the next, if I knew I could pick up the phone and talk to Ty and say, hey, man, I'm in a jam. I got to get a car, a load of cars from here and there. I know it might cost me a couple extra bucks, but can you help me out? That's so, it's priceless, those yeah. relationships. It is. And, and so today, this, this is a good segue into what you're doing now, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're doing this Max Digital, which is a dashboard for mm -hmm. the dealer, yeah. right? And so what does this dashboard do? So, <clears throat> Jay, can you share a screen or whatever? You I, yeah, sure. let's see here. What do we what Yeah, are we here, do? let's go. Uh, okay, so I just enabled screen share, and you should be able to take it away. Mm -hmm. So the, um, let's see here, share my screen. Let's make sure I share the correct <laughs> one here. All right, can't see, how about this? Can you guys see this? There we go, we see something, there we go, thank you. Yeah, yeah so um, there are a lot of products, I say a lot, there are several products like First Look and Max that are out there. We're not the only player in this space. The auto's out there. Um, historically, there's been companies like AX and um, a couple other ones out there, but. What essentially we do is we provide um, analytics behind a uh, used car inventory for the dealership. And when a guy logs in, he can look right away. And everything on the left-hand side of this dashboard here is about his appraisals. So um, and not necessarily for this audience, but listen, if a dealership isn't trading for cars, if they're not closing deals, um, closing trades, they're not selling cars. So we... We give them some analytics and we give them a you know, way to enter the, the VIN in, and we can look at that stuff. In the middle here, we show the, the dealer his inventory. And we talked about um, how the inventory at a dealership, I, I refer to it as a block of ice. Ty, you were saying, you know, the, the interest on the car, however you want to look at it, it gets expensive. Uh, I think NADA will tell you it's about $44, $50 a day to carry a car at a, a used car at, a, at a, an average lot. So we, we give them a picture of, you know, of, of, of how many cars are in each one of these buckets, you know, and, and, we, and we help them decide, you know, which cars are good cars, which cars are bad cars we need to, to, to act on quicker. And on the right hand side here, you know, this might be a little bit more for, for your audience. We do give a lot of recommendations to the dealers on how to stock their inventory. You know, um, guys, hopefully dealers don't just show up to the auction and, and say, all right, let's see, uh, what do we got today? And they start buying. I mean, you, you could have done that 
10, 15 years ago. You can't do that in 2020. So we make recommendations based off of data. Um, so, you know, a guy can come in here right off the bat and just and, and get a good idea of what his used car position is and, and what he needs to do for the day to, to get going, to sell more cars um, for more money faster. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're looking at, go back to this appraisal and this trade, because you said something, you know, if they're not trading, what were you saying about that? Yeah. So if a, if a dealer, so we, this number up here in the top left is the, the appraisal closing rate. Okay. Essentially, how many out of 10 are you are you getting when you look at a, a, a customer's car, right? So mom brings her car up. She wants to trade it in for a new one. You know, are you winning trades or not? And we just let them know. 53% here at this location, I applaud them. Anything over 50% is, is pretty good. Right. Now, in two, see, I, I've, I've been around enough dealers. I always tell the story. I, I've <clears throat> became a dealer for one reason. That was so I could get into the auction without anybody giving me any lip. Yeah. So I'm not a car dealer. I just wanted to get in the auction to hang out with car dealers. So what, in talking to car dealers, one of the things I was here, or I remember, I remember I would get the phone call, Ty, I got 30 cars I need you to take to the auction. <clears throat> okay. And then we would get to the auction and there would be probably 15 that wouldn't sell. So I'd be like, hey, what happened to those? Oh, my my used car manager buried me in those. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those stories? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so this what in one of the things you said, right, mm -hmm. about trading car. If you're not trading, you're not selling. Is that what you said? That's what I say. Yep. OK, so if you're not trading, you're not selling. Mm -hmm. So whenever Jay does his Thursday show with Sue and they're looking at Central Dispatch load board and the loads are down, everybody's like, what's wrong? What's going on? Whoa. Well, dealers aren't selling cars, right? Yeah. And they're, maybe they're not trading. So that it would indicate people aren't really doing any buying and selling right now. So when I tell guys, go talk to the used car manager, which that's what you said, that guy knows everything about his inventory and you're yeah. showing. <clears throat> when you go talk to the used car manager and you say, how are your trades? This right here illustrates, okay, now you take over, Tim. Yeah, so yeah, like, <clears throat> The used car business, um, if, if you're a good dealer, it, it's always a good used car month. Um, if, you're, if you're an average used car de dealer, um, you will have your ups and downs. And we're probably in a down part of the year. You know, 2020 is a little different, um, but we've kind of come back to normal. Um, it's what all the data is saying. So if you're a transporter and you're thinking it's kind of slow, well, yeah, it's slow. It's always slow this time of year, but I'll tell you, it's, it's about to pick up. I think it made it, correct me if I'm wrong, you might have been out there this week, Ty. I think it picked up this week a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if um, uh, you'll notice your healthy dealers have cars to sell at the auction every week and to buy at the auction every week, regardless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So as we're looking at this and I'm talking, okay, so your job is to help the guy on the trade, not get buried in the trade. Is that mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. And that's important, guys. As a car hauler, you need to understand this. Because when dealers trade for cars and they're buried in it, right. that means that <clears throat> it could actually end up being good news for right. you as a car hauler. So, because yeah. you so, from one auction to the other auction to the other auction. I've right. done that. <laughs> yeah. De dealers, will, um, uh, what, dealers will sell from cost, unfortunately. You know, regardless of what the car is worth, it's what they have in it. And that's I'm not telling you it's saying that's right or wrong. Um, that's just how they think. So when the guy says that to you, you know, you know, you'd be like, everybody's, like, wow, that brought all the money. Well, he probably, he, yeah, you know, he maybe he had to pay more for that car or he over evaluated it in the beginning. Our tool helps them hopefully not do that. But, you know, listen, I, I can't control the buttons that they're going to push and the deals that they're going to make. I can only give them the data. Right, because and that's the key right there. You just said it. The deal. At the end, at hey, the what's end, the deal? It's, they want the deal. <laughs> the deal. Let's put the deal together. So another thing I always tell guys, and I don't know if this is on your on your uh, dashboard here, but I always tell guys go to the used car side of any any store and count how many used cars are on that parking lot, mm -hmm. and you can get a pretty decent idea that they sell about half of that number every month. Is that true or false? Um, 
Yeah, I would hope more than that. It depends. A franchise dealer should be selling at least half, um, hopefully more. An independent dealer, yeah, half. A buy here, pay here, certainly half. It depends yeah, on who you're working with. Here, um, you the can reason- see this this dealer here. You know, they have 178 vehicles. It's a 30 day supply. They sell a lot of cars at this store. Okay. So they're selling 100, 178 30 day supply. That means they're selling a, how many in a month? 170? About 150 to 160. Wow. So how many do they have to keep in stock? Um, they probably, well, so they probably should be carrying about 180. Um, you know, this 178 in our system you know, accounts for vehicles that, you know, when, when you talk about in stock, you have cars that are in transit, right? You've, you've, right. you've bought here, you've got cars that are in recon, and then you've got cars that are on the lot. You need to have a good balance there. Um, so, you know, 178 will, will carry them through a month. They should probably be carrying closer to 200. Um, I imagine if they did, they could probably sell more cars. Right. And, and this is, this is good conversation between us because this, this is what I try to teach car haulers. When you're talking to the used car manager and you look over before you meet him and you say, there's 200 cars sitting on the lot. Mm-hmm. Now we can go in and say, how many, you know, what are you doing with your trades? How many cars do you sell a month? Well, I sell, if the guy says 300, he might be not telling you the truth, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, <laughs> you, if you see 200 cars, you you got a pretty safe bet. A hundred is, is a guarantee. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I tell people that I say, okay, this is what you call residual income and you won't ever hear a car hauler talking about residual income. Right. But this is true story. Tell me if I'm wrong. You've been in the business longer than I have. If a guy does, if a car dealership is doing his business, right, he does the same thing every day, every week, every month and every year. And he tries to beat it every day, every week, every month, every year. Right. <laughs> yeah. He, well, he, he doesn't try to. He has to. He wants to keep his job. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 There's so if you've ever seen a car, a used car manager having a bad day, he probably got a tongue lashing from the uh, the general manager or the owner before he got to the auction. Yeah, and sometimes those roll downhill. I've had yeah. plenty of the guys go off on me, so yeah. I totally understand it. But again, what I'm what are the where I'm trying to go with this is. <clears throat> The, the value of having the relationship with the dealer and the dealer having the relationship with the carrier, it enables you to understand. You don't, I don't need to know exactly how much you have in the car. I don't need to know exactly how many, I don't, you know, as a carrier, I don't. But if I got a, a decent understanding of what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? Yep. And it's, it's real basic. We're here to sell cars. <laughs> yeah. Most, most dealers, um, have and I this, I work with this with my my customers. We talk about two types of wholesale, two types of cars we're going to run at the auction. We have our immediate wholesale, which is our trades, which is our junkers, right? Those are cars that never were meant to be retailed, right? They don't fit the bill. Higher, older mileage stuff. Those might be the no runners. Yeah. Um. You know, they're they're probably a struggle for you guys. You know, they might hand sell them. A good dealer will bring them to the auction to. You know, have that one guy bid against the other. And then the other wholesale cars is what I call aged wholesale. Those are the cars that they've, you know, for one reason or another, they've slipped through, right? They're 60, 70, 100 days old. And the boss is telling them, we got to turn the money, right? For interest purposes, whatever. Um, you know, it, see what kind of, if it's a franchise or an independent dealer and he's bringing, you know, what kind of cars is he bringing there? And maybe you want to ask if he's bringing all his junkers, it's like, hey, man, you know, what do you do with your, your frontline stuff? Do you need help hauling that? You know, cause there's always another side to what type of inventory he's bringing to the auction. If he's, if he's not bringing both types of cars. Right. So that's a great segue to my next two questions, which are, I'm really happy to have you on to ask these. What do you see <clears throat> now? I guess apparently you're up here in Kansas city this week. We missed each other, but when you're talking to your used car manager about his trade in inventory, what are you guys doing with it? What do you What are you encouraging your dealers to do with their trade in inventory right now? So the thing, so um, you'll hear this a lot across uh, guys who do what I do. It's it's we push the first thirty. It's important for a dealer to retail out of as many cars as he can in the first thirty days. I call it the sweet spot. So um, we were visiting the Chevy dealership 
on um, out on Shawnee Mission Parkway, and, and you know, like, you know, we're like, hey, how's it going? Good, you know. Um, how are sweet spot sales? Because if you're not selling cars in the sweet spot, I mean, I can sh- I can show you the data. You know, dealers make the most money there, so that's the thing that we focus on first. And when and when he's not hitting that number, let's talk about why he's not hitting that number and what can we do to help him hit that number. I mean, because it could be a number of things that are holding him back from, you know, hitting his sweet spot sales. Okay, so the question is a carrier, right? So that makes sense. The sweet spot, get rid of it in thirty days. That's your sweet spot. Mm-hmm. From a carrier side. Are you seeing most of your dealer's stores, your franchise stores, your independents, are they keeping the cars on the back lot, calling ACV, calling Trade Rev, calling back lot cars, or are they sending them to the auction? What are you seeing the most? Um, the guys that I work with, the big dealers, they have commitments with, with the big auction houses, Mannheim, Odessa. Um, so that's where they're sending most of their inventory. You know, I we've seen a big shift over the last eight, you know, six, nine months. Yeah, the guys, I have a bunch of buddies who work at ACV. I think it's a great platform. You know, clearly, somebody thought that backlot cars was worth something. Odessa bought them up. You know, um, the, the buying and selling of cars between dealers is not going anywhere. I right. think you guys, you guys talked about it earlier. I think it's only going to get more and more important. And here's, let me tell you why. COVID is hitting every part of the economy. Um, it's hitting these factories that are building the cars. But they, they used to make 100 a day. They're probably only making 75 a day. It's hitting the parts guys. It's hitting everybody. So we are going to have a shortage of inventory for quite some time. And the guy who finds the car he wants, because he called up the used car factory and found that yellow Corvette with the brown interior, just happens to be across country, he gonna want, he'll, he's, he'll be willing to pay. And that's where I think there's a ton of opportunity in the, in the near future for, for transporters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So what you're seeing with your dealers is their, whether it be their trade in inventory, their old or uh, old age inventory, whenever they decide, okay, I, I don't want this car anymore. Most of your stores you're saying have some kind of a contractual agreement, whether it be verbal or a paper with a bigger auction house and they're saying, the auction house. Okay. So the next question is, is let's talk about acquisition of used car inventory. Mm-hmm. How's it, what, what do you see and what do you hear? So I have a, I have a mix on that. Um, I have one group that has a very aggressive auction strategy, um, but it's expensive to buy at the auction for a dealer for a lot of reasons, right? If they thought the car was worth 10,000, well, now they got to pay a sale fee and now they got to pay a transport fee. So that car they thought was 10 grand, they now own for close to 10, seven, right. You know, and then they're going to go recon it. They got, they got 11, five in it. You talk about the guy who says they're buried in the car. They're doing it to themselves all the time. So buying from the auction is a very, um, it's a slippery slope for a lot of dealers. You have to be very good at it. Um, a lot of dealers, I, I, I've, I push to have you know, buy as many cars from the, the general public as possible. And if you if you looked, you'll see Carvana last quarter bought more cars from customers in Q3 than they sold. Yeah. And that was what the pillar was. That was the pillar of our business at CarMax when I was there back in the day. And let me tell you, I, I, I had this conversation with Jay. There's this, in my opinion, there's this, I'm gonna call it the last mile. Right. There's the need, This we are in a delivery economy you know, someone is going to have to go to, if I'm going to buy your car and I'm Carvana, someone's going to go pick it up. And if I'm going to sell you a car online, someone's got to deliver it. And it isn't going to be a driver in most cases. So um, inventory is coming from all different places. And I think that there's opportunities for transporters to regardless of where you're buying the dealers are buying the inventory from. Well, here's the reason I like to ask this question, especially to a guy like you is because you get, see in my, my, with my background, I think, okay, this can't, it, there's no way that it, this could change, which is, you know, let's take, let's take Fayetteville Auto Mall. You, you know that one, right? Yeah, yeah. I know Tom. Yeah, let's take that one and, let, <laughs> and let's talk about, say, 2019, not that long ago. Mm-hmm. 
if Tom couldn't make it to the auction, Tom would sit at the desk and buy 60 cars in one couple hours. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. he would call Ty and say, Ty, I need you to go get the 60 cars. And they, they, we, Ty would have them there next day. Mm-hmm. Because Tom would usually buy, say, in Kansas City, 250, 300 miles or less. And, and, and ties in here, right? So yeah. what I'm... What I think I'm hearing, because I'm a little detached, maybe not as in the in as I used to be since I don't have trucks, but what I, the message I keep hearing is is that a guy like Tom isn't buying 60 cars of whack anymore. Um, not not right now. No one no one was buying in any bulk this year. Um, yeah. There were it just there just wasn't the inventory. I take that back. Carvana, Carmax, yeah. I think Groom was trying to buy a bunch. <laughs> You know, Car- but yeah, I know guy. You know, I know guys who were going to the sale. They had hundred, couple hundred cars written down, and they lucky if they came, they came home with a truckload. Yeah. Where you know they needed twenty. If they got ten, they were they were happy. So, so what what I think I hear you saying is is because see you, the factory program sells. That's what that's what I always I'm like. Look, you go to a Mannheim and you go to Mannheim, Kansas City. If you're a Nissan dealer, a Toyota yep. dealer, a Ford dealer, mm-hmm. they have a special lane. Yep. Everybody can buy from those, but it's the finance. Nissan Motor Acceptance Corp, Toyota Financial, Ford Motor Credit. They're running a couple hundred cars through there. Dealers are buying them like crazy. And then there's the guys online that are buying them, the Ford guy, the Toyota guy, the Nissan guy. Yep. And they'll sit there and they'll buy them. And I'm like, who needs to be at the auction to buy that, right? Yeah, no, right. In 2019 with 12,000 miles on it, I think we're okay, guys, as long Correct. as, you know. So – my, my take on that was always, well, those guys that are buying the bulk, that are buying these newer cars, they don't have to be at the auction. And they can still run those cars, not run them, excuse me, and buy them all day long. Yeah, so I mean, this year was a little different, right? They, they closed the auctions. You weren't even allowed to go. They were digital only for many weeks. Um, so, you know, that was what, what we went through this year was uh, a big learning curve, you know, c- condition reports. <laughs> um, became yeah. you know, the CR became a new hot term at the at the at the auction house this year. What was it? Um, the the CR, the condition oh, CR, report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and listen, there was a, there were no new cars for a long time. That's why these the late model things were 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 selling real good, you know, because they needed them to replace the new car inventory they weren't getting. But you also have um, you just you've mentioned it, all these financial companies, remember they there was a lot of loan forgiveness over the last six, nine months. <laughs> Even though you didn't pay your bill, they weren't coming to get your car. <laughs> um, so those, those cars are not hitting the auctions yet. You know, the, the repos, the first payment defaults, people are riding, ain't paying. And they're like, All right. well, I think that's going to change, you know, in the spring, yeah. you know, it'll start to tighten up a little bit. Um, so, but hang in there, you know, I, the, the auto industry, thank God. I don't know why I still do it, but, it's been very good to me. Um, it's been very good. I, I guess I bet to all of us, you know, I think, I think it's very healthy going forward. Yeah. I, I would agree with that hundred percent. I really, I really, after talking to Paul machine and black book and, and seeing what's coming down the pipe and last Friday on the show in the transport parking lot, we ran into an actual repo guy. We're going to try to get back with him and find out what's really going on. So I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily into predicting anything, but you're starting to see signs of life when you see Mannheim put out another article. Hey, we're going to try to crank open another 12, I think it was. Did you see that, Jay? 12 sales, live bidding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this personal opinion, I think they're reluctant to do so. Oh, yeah. uh, the dealers are really pushing them for, in, for well, live bidding. Are, that, you know, that, that is clearly the subtext yeah. of the article. It, is, it should say begrudgingly <laughs> 12 more lanes. Yeah, they, they don't want to do it. I mean, they have to pay the drivers. Um, yeah, but there's the risk of people getting sick. There's a lot of different reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you made a, an interesting comment that I, I I don't necessarily want to debate with you, but you know the sur- slippery slope of going to the auction can cost more money, and the, and the only thing I would say is your time, which is definitely worth a lot, mm-hmm. especially if you're that used car manager and it's your day off and you're going to the auction to buy cars, right? Yep. Which we've all had to deal with that problem, but. From what I've been hearing on the streets, the buy fee, the sell fee is the same online. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know Actually, about that. I heard I mean, they I mean, actually they're... charge you an internet fee too. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, I, they're going <laughs> to, 
Cox Automotive is going to get their piece. No matter <laughs> what. Um, the, the thing about the auction is it's the only place a dealer can go and one, look at a bunch of cars, but two, you can pay less for a car than you think it's worth, but you will also pay more for a car than you think it's worth. Yeah. And the same thing goes on the, when on a sell side. It's the only place you can go and sell a car for more than you think it's worth, but you also might sell it for less. Yeah, it's a good point. Well, and that and that's what I think, <clears throat> regardless of what what Ty thinks. Okay, because Ty's always the guy that's saying, "Would you guys just please run cars through the auction?" Yeah. You know? And I, I always give this illustration. I'm like, "There's a hundred guys out here that might buy two cars this week. Mm-hmm. That's two hundred cars. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys are dependent." on the auction being open so they can see the cars to buy the car. I mean, that's, that's that low end car, which by the way, has always been my favorite car. The low I, end love, car? I, I love the buy here, pay here group. Uh, just, <laughs> it's the biggest opportunity in the auto industry. Just wait. It's, I mean, cars are, they're built better than ever. Um, yeah. And it, you know, I've been around these buy here, pay here guys for a long time. And I talk about them because Here's the thing. They have a recon center and, it, you know, this CarMax. I, I look at them up here. Dude, they've got their own trucks going everywhere now. Oh, yeah. They have, yeah. They have, Unreal. You guys would know better. I, I, they have their own transport company now, right? Or they're. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had a we had a guy work for us. This is back in 1999. We hired Gary. He would drive all the cars all around Houston for us. We thought it was awesome. We put CarMax sticker on the side of the truck. And we had a CarMax truck. <laughs> Well, and that's what I tell my, my car hauling guys that I'm coaching all the time. I said, look, what do you, you pull into any car dealership and you, you tell me what you see. You see clean cars, clean people, clean building. Okay. Emulate, emulate, look like. Yeah. Or clean your truck. It takes 10 minutes at the car wash. Just rinse the damn thing off. It, it really, it's not that big a deal. And then when you come in, make sure you don't have tobacco in your teeth and your hair is kind of. <laughs> well, maybe you put a little deodorant on or something. Don't. <laughs> The, the, I can remember one time I, I, I received a transporter and uh, the guy clearly didn't look like a hauler. He got gets out of the truck and he says, sir, he says, I have never hauled cars before. I said, well, what do you usually haul? He's like, cattle. He's like, you just whip them a little bit. They get right on the truck. He's like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to get these cars on the truck. I certainly don't know how to get them off the truck. You think you can help me? <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> sure at awesome. least, at hard least hard look the part, story. right? <laughs> wow. That's great. Well, that's what's so awesome about car haulers. We really don't know what we're doing most of the time. <laughs> so I want to ask you this. So is there any integration into any auto transport software into or out of any Max Digital software? Not yet. Right. I kind of thought you were going to say that. We are working on it. Well, and you're not alone. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's this new wave. That's what, that's one of the things that's so exciting for a guy like like me. Were you like eavesdropping on one of my meetings today? I really. So, uh, (laughs) no. Okay. (laughs) We are, um, yeah. So Max is working on some things, um, on the redistribution side for dealers and we will uh you know have the obviously there'll be a need to move cars between dealers so yeah we're, we're working on it mm-hmm. well and that's the, and that's why it that's why i think for for really i think anybody in software and there's so many overlaps oh my god god where where do we stop or start a conversation about all the overlapping of products uh, I'll just say Vin TV again. I said Vin TV earlier. It's all about uh, advertising. the The world of advertising for a dealer has gotten so complicated. With where I mean, let's say you want to do television advertising. Where do you start? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh! I mean, when and the thing is, th- this presentation I saw. I mean, you add Roku and Amazon and Netflix, and I mean, it is a it's a totally different world. You take that expansion and change in in just in a segment and look at what's happened with the digital auctions so i do believe wherever your software is you're going to want to plug it into transportation and i think everybody's kind of faced with that and that's why when i saw like the manheim handshake deals email i thought now there's there's a there's a group that recognizes what's about to happen yeah, um, you can't because that, that dam. There are cracks in the dam. Some of the water is starting to come out. 
And if the dam fully breaks, there could be a hundred companies vying for the software piece that connects to the transport company. Whether it comes from the top, from an Amazon or an Uber, or the entrepreneur that hasn't reached the marketplace yet, I mean, you've got... There's going to be dozens of companies. That's why I see, I, I find interesting, any company that's already in auto transport software, you better check your rear view mirror because there's another one coming. Oh, yeah. And I, I had never seen, that was a great piece you did, by the way, you. on um, all of the dashboards. I had never, um, I, I like that a lot. That that one, was it Carvana? That thing's terrible. That's yeah. what I said. Oh well, God. that's what, here's, here, here, here's the thing is, huh. and here's what's great. There's a, They got a lot of inventory, but... Yeah. Probably somebody like a marketing person or a UX or a UI or whatever that get in there and take a look at that user interface. Yeah. Because that it, it actually that's what UR auto loads used to look like. Yeah. So it's a starting point, but it's now time to let's get let's update some of the fields. And by the way, that's one of the funny things too. In dispatching an auto transport, just in a couple of years ago. There were emails going out with, here's 500 loads that need to be moved, mm -hmm. and they're they're not organized in any way. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I can <laughs> remember you know, Lotus Notes, just adding, yeah. adding your lo Lotus cars to, uh, to transport. Yeah, hopefully they'll get picked up. It is. It's interesting. And so there, this is, this is, I don't, it's not maybe the final frontier. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but transportation is one of the frontiers that's been overlooked. Which is why I got so excited when I realized this is a gold mine of content to share, and and let's let's be part of the update. It's a it's we're in a delivery society, it. Jay, and it you know moving things over the road is, is and it's not going anywhere. I like what you said. Uh, would you say this is a we live in a delivery economy? We live in a delivery society. Yep, and the last mile is 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 so key, the final mile. Right. Well, and talk about another topic that makes people kind of look the other way when we talk about final mile and home delivery mm -hmm. man that's a that's a bedtime story right there a lot of people do not want to talk about that and i'm uh, not saying it's easy but it, that right sticking a carmax sticker on the side of the truck is the beginning mm -hmm. of your final I mean, mile look, the carvana delivery. ads have their flatbed truck that pulls up in front of that nice house Somewhere, some neighborhood I'd live in. So, and and that and there is, and that's what that's where you have to have, yeah. You almost have to have somebody that believes in the idea and is willing to put peel some money off that roll of hundred dollar bills because that's the only way to pull off that level of branding organization. Yeah. So I'm sorry to, I just yeah no you're good. Like, what so what are you seeing in sales say in the last couple months so i mean this is going to be a record year for the automotive industry from a gross profit perspective dealers are going to make more money than ever before right. but it will not be from selling a lot of cars right. it will be from demand and supply yeah supply and demand and then we i saw that at the auction like real life i was like holy cow yeah i mean the, pull up nada the jd power nada weekly I, it's, I run a Facebook page. I have all, I, I, I post it weekly. Um, get on blackbook.com. You, you, you had those guys on. You'll see prices were just going up and up and up and up and up. And, you know, so, but and, um, and that's and another it's going to continue. You have in common with Paul again is talking about getting cars from customers. Got to. He loves talking about Got that. To. And that's I, another area as a transport like that's an interesting prospect yeah i'll be speaking at nada this year probably well probably from right here <laughs> uh on sourcing inventory uh unique ways to source inventory but the number one way is from the customer right we'll talk about all different ways you can strategize for that it's so key that's interesting i really appreciate you taking the time man that's oh, yeah, great you, you got a new fan here man. oh man i, I love you guys Thank you, Tim. Yeah, Jeez, and, thank you. And you, we are. We're gonna. What well, me and Ty, if we haven't already done this, and I'm just saying it live, we're gonna try to make you part of our gang. All right. So <laughs> because you speak our language, you've got a lot of information to impart, and in and in return, I think we, you know, this is this is the epicenter of car shipping business 
update and information. So whatever whatever help we can be. And by the way, I encourage you to do this. Here's a risky move. Okay. Watch Dispatching Live on Thursday at noon. Yeah, so how come I got to stay up till 10 o'clock to watch? So you got all these shows during the day. You got to My wife's got to go sleeping. She's like, oh. I roped you in, Absolutely. man. I got another one. I know, Absolutely. It is, I, you should, because, and it's a 90-minute show. So, and it's a, you know, it's a crazy show. But I think what you'll see, what I try to point out is this, is that from the carrier perspective, um, as the, uh, you know, 100% spot market, no, no customers, no clients, booking off load boards, it is, it's intense. And it's almost un, it's almost unfair how hard it is for the guy trying to live on the spot market because it is it is leftover city. And I encourage all anybody shipping a car, any company or person, just pay a little closer attention to what information you provide to any company that is trying to help you ship a car. Pay attention to the rate you're paying. Think about what the carrier goes through. So we try to point that out. And I use a little bit of visual comedy. So <laughs> that is one heck of a crazy show. Thursday at noon. Thursday at noon. Dispatching live. I'll try to get a hold of Kim and let you know if I put him on the show Friday. The repo guy I met in the transport parking lot. Oh, yeah. From SYR Association. SYR stands for steal your ride, by the way. <laughs> That That's guy's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm, I think I have him on Friday. But, no, Tim, right. this is really good. And it's it's good, again, I, I can't emphasize enough for the guys watching the show. And we have dealers watching. We actually have some people watching that we don't know are watching. But it's always good, in my opinion, to have a guy who's been at the auction, who's been at the dealership, who understands all the aspects of selling a car from purchase to sell to just talk. It's, it's, it's very good for the carrier to see this interaction. It's real. We're real people. We don't know each other. We just, I talked to you on the phone for five seconds today yeah. and now we're talking about cars and, yep. and what I try to encourage car hauler guys to do, just go talk to the car dealer and look, we did it. It was beautiful. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Well over yeah. an hour. You guys are fantastic. Yeah, Thank you, Tim, okay. so much for your time. Well, Appreciate Thanks, it. Jay. All right, Thanks, we're gonna Jay. end this meeting, everybody. Good night. Thank Thanks. your family. Thank you guys. And I'll see you. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Okay. Tell them all. Bye. You can buy more. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night, John Boy. Anybody remember that? Good night, John Boy. Oh my goodness. Um, let's see. Okay, we're still here. So we had we had one little internet hiccup. Uh, there was just one rock in the washing machine tonight. Not a big deal. I think we're okay. Um, and I think I got, man, I got through my entire list. That's awesome. Sourcing vehicles from the customer. That's another topic. We're going to be hearing more about that. Um, Paula Blackbook also likes to talk about the growing repossession market. Tim was talking about that. Sourcing vehicles from customers. Tim was talking about that. And obviously, we got to talk again about the integration of transportation technology into all the dealer dashboards. There is, man, there's so much happening. Um, and ultimately, and that's why Dispatching Live, I think, is, is one of those elemental shows where it is about what a carrier goes through to maintain profitability. And the load board is hard enough. So that's why Ty keeps on hammering, talk to dealers, get a customer, get a client, be a cleaner fish for a big transport company. Do something other than living off the spot market, especially in Q4 of any year. It's Q4 is always going to be hard. So you got to get your you got to get your money while you can. And I know that is not easy to do. Um, Mike, check, check. I mean, I'm checking the audio. The show's almost over, but I'm a perfectionist like that. Hopefully it's okay. Seems like it's a little low, but we might be all right. But listen, here's what I need to do. I want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. Thank you so much for uh, co-hosting on Thursdays on Dispatching Live and being a great dispatch company, even if there's still a debate on whether brokering or dispatching is illegal. I don't know. The jury's still out. We're going to be covering that, and we're going to cover that issues like that tomorrow on DOT Compliance, so join us tomorrow for that. 
Thank you, Mark Grodeke from Superflow Systems Dispatch Center. Really appreciate you. Thanks for being in the live chat and answering questions. Mark is going to be with us next Tuesday night. That's going to be awesome on uh, auction and transport consolidation with Sky Hallman of Auction View, One Auction View, and Mark Rodeke of Superflow Systems. I also want to thank Jack Cooper. Thank you, Jack Cooper, for participating in this channel. Uh, if you're looking for a career, go to jackcooper.com forward slash careers. They're looking for drivers. They're looking for mechanics and yard supervisors, other jobs like that. So you want to check that out. I want to thank Tim Scoutalis, Director of Strategic Accounts at Max Digital, for being our guest tonight, spending so much time with us. Um, and we do, we keep everybody up late. So thank you for staying up late with us. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, everybody in the live chat. I saw a lot of activity in the live chat. And uh, Paul Meyer, he's throwing up the comments. And I appreciate that. Throwing up the comments, throwing down the comments. Thank you guys so much for being a part of Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday Night's Live. This is a wrap on episode 164 in a row on a Tuesday. So thank you so much. And everybody that helped me ring the bell tonight, thank you. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do it without you. Auto Transport Intel is the car shipping business channel. I'm Jay, the founder and host. And I hope you'll join me. So get some sleep. Because we're going to be live again in 14 hours with Brian Riker, your DOT guy, on DOT Compliance Wednesday. To find the link for that, you can go to the YouTube homepage, Auto Transport Intel, on YouTube. There's already a reminder. You just click on it, set your reminder, and we'll see you at noon. Bring your DOT Compliance questions, FMCSA, DOT, regulations, IFTA, fees, fines, problems, MC Authority. This is the show for you, especially if you're just starting out. So please do join us. I'm Jay. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. And I'll see you soon.